Yeah, that was an accident. <laughs> Todd was fixing the chicken coop. Just telling him about your oops. <laughs> yeah. And he came in the house and he was like, Rachel, I need help. <laughs> I was like, okay. He was fixing the wheels because one of the wheels broke. And I came out and I was like, where's the chickens? <laughs> I said, yeah. oh, they'll be fine. They Hopefully they'll figure out to go home. <laughs> so we're just going to watch them. I'm about to head out to the garden and get some peas. They were spending a lot of time by the old chickens. Oh, were they? Getting to know each other and like, I think they wanted to get in there with them. Oh, really? Or that rooster that kept crowing was like trying to send a yeah. signal to mm, them, like, you're... come be a part of my flock. Mm, yeah. But they are enjoying it. It's kind of fun to have little free range chickens. So mulberries are falling on the ground right now. So uh -huh. they're just finding all kinds of fun stuff. But let's go head over to the garden. I got to get a lot of peas. So I know I'm really shaded and that's purposeful because the sun is setting and you guys are blocking me from that sun. But I see this wood here. I've got two of them now around my garden and somebody's asked me to talk about my garden fencing and this is deer fencing or um, snow fencing. And then inside of it we have, we bought like a big tall roll of deer fencing and cut it in half. And it's lasted for, this is the th third season I believe. But the rabbits have finally gotten smart this year because that's why we put it up because I had rabbits building nests in my strawberry beds and they have cut perfect holes, chewed through it and found ways in. So I have two of those currently in my garden, which is very frustrating. But maybe this year we're actually going to install the permanent. This was always meant to be temporary. Um, so it looks like sooner rather than later, we're going to have to put up our permanent fencing and it worked well. I've, you know, the one thing I don't like about it is that the grass grows up and you can't really use a flame, flame leader against this wood very well. And the grass grows in between the wood chip barrier, the plastic fencing and the wood fencing coat. So. You kind of always have that look. I mean, I guess it looks organic. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. <laughs> and also, before we head to the peas, I'm going to see if I can find one. I have found my very first squash bugs, guys, this week. I've been killing them as I find them. I don't see any right now. Oh, well, yep, here's one. If you don't know what a squash bug is, this is him, and he's going to die. Very painful death. And let that spider eat him that's right there. So I'm still wrapping my pantyhose around as these pumpkin, this is a pumpkin, as the pumpkin's growing. Oh. And what the squash bugs will do is basically they eat the sap from the plants and they'll feed on the squash, pumpkins, um, melons, cucumbers, and they ultimately end up destroying. They lay so many eggs on and they lay the eggs on typically on the underside of the plant leaves. So you kind of look for those and they'll be like orangey black. So it just depends. I guess maybe at what stage they're in and so I look for those but they will just decimate a plant where it can't survive anymore so that is my new pest daily check <laughs> you can use if you're not organic gardening you can use seven dust which is probably the most common pesticide used to kill aphids like that but we um, try to stick to organic gardening methods and my finger killing them, checking them a few times a day. I'll, I'm going to try to do my best keeping them at bay this year. 
So I can't remember exactly how many I planted, somewhere between four and 500. I'm growing way more pea plants than I've ever grown before because what I've learned over the years is I could never ever grow near enough peas to have much to put up. I think last year I put up maybe three quart bags in the freezer of peas. And so far this year I've put up one quart. Now, these are a shelling pea. It's a Tom Thumb variety that I bought from So True Seed. And you'll get, you're going to get tempted. I'm gonna just do an example for you. You're gonna get tempted to pick your peas too soon. So this is an example of a pea pod that's ready. It's really swollen, but it's not dry yet. And if you've never harvested peas before, if you just crack the top off, pull the stem down, you pop it open, and you have nice, beautiful, fat peas like they should look. Now you're gonna get tempted and you're gonna wanna pick them as soon as they start to swell. And I do this too, cause I get excited. And I'll open it up and you're gonna find out like they had so much more room to grow. So let's just hold them side by side. And you can see the example of a pea that's ready versus peas that aren't ready. Now I still keep them just fine, but you're just losing out on some of your harvest that way. So unlike um, sugar snap peas, when they're really young, the pea pods are edible, but once they get this way, you can chew on them and get a lot of flavor, but they basically just turn to string in your mouth and they're not very edible anymore. So I don't wanna waste these, so we'll eat these. Yummy. So I'm gonna go through here and harvest my peas, take you guys with and show you what we end up with. But would you look at my tomato plants? Can you guys see this? Look how tall it is. It's doing good. I am doing what I said I was gonna do in single stemming this year so that they have plenty of airflow since um, they, I did plant them very intensely. You hear that sound too in the bowl? That's when you know a pea is ready. If they don't have that hard thud, you know it's not ready yet. Okay, this is gonna take me a while, so. Maybe I'll either give you some cinematic music or show you around the garden while I'm picking peas. Second hand, I felt a bit forgotten. Not your plan, but now the days of silence outgrow the fun things we have done. But tell me, do you want to carry on? Plants don't grow without water And they cave when it's cold We could go till we're older Put your head on my shoulder And let's enjoy it Enjoy it. 
So I don't know if you if I can get this in the sunlight for you guys. You can hardly see through this one. That's a very full pea. So, but let me show you one that's not ready. See that one? You can see through it a lot and you can see the individual peas. You know that one's not ready. Ready? Not ready. So I'm almost to the end. There's quite a few in here that are good. And this is, in my life, the best pea harvest I've ever had. Let me show you. Wow. That's a lot. Like, I've been working on perfecting, not perfecting, just figuring it out for years. So don't get discouraged if every year you just like, ah, oh, I'm still not getting enough to put up and preserve because that's all part of the learning process, figuring out how many, you know, how much you yield. And every year is going to be a little different based on pest pressure or spring floods or drought conditions and but having a good idea like just one years of good experience and honestly after I shell all these it might be a quart and a half of peas maybe <laughs> so it takes a lot of peas um, and I, there's still tons on the vine. I even passed by several that are still flowering. So I've got a lot left to go, but I know like really what I need, I probably need, if you guys are familiar with my garden, four borders of just peas to really grow enough. And uh, what I might do is try a fall crop this year I should be able to have time to do that if I plant them like, I would say like mid-July mid maybe. And uh, have some good sweet peas before it freezes. So anyway guys, um, shelling peas, putting up peas is absolutely one of my favorites. It's kind of like almost like digging potatoes. Every one you open, you hope it's going to be like the perfect um, perfect peas in a pod, you know, and you're not going to be missing any spaces. And if you've ever shelled peas, you know what I'm talking about. It's just every single one is fully developed. And, uh, so like this one, for example, I know the top one didn't develop. There's two good peas in this shell. So thanks guys for watching and coming out in the garden with me today and doing some fun harvesting sharing with you just the new challenges, right? The rabbits attacking, squash bugs coming in. It's an ongoing battle for food freedom. Talk to you guys soon.